A surefire way to make sure your design looks great is to ensure you have enough spacing. And specifically, you want to make sure that the, there's equal spacing around everything. So if you have a amount of space on the outside of your design in Canva, it's the same all over the place, so it's orderly. You want to make sure you have enough so everything isn't just crowded, everything's spaced in. And that can sound kind of counterintuitive where you want me to add empty space to have the user understand more. But absolutely, it's the case. So it makes it comfortable to read. When everything's cluttered and mashed in together, there's no space to it, it can't breathe, you can't really see anything. Seeing the forest through the trees, so to speak. And it also makes it balanced and orderly. When you look at it and it's well spaced, it's a comfortable design, everything's got about the same spacing, the eye is easy, makes it a lot easier to jump around and actually take in the information. So it really helps comprehension of your design as well. Not to mention that same principle will help focus. So you having a piece of text that kind of breaks out the rest, if there's enough spacing around it, if it's comfortable, if it's even, people are going to be able to focus in on what you're trying to say in particular elements as well. So as well, you can also group like elements. So ensuring that there is less space between items that are part of the same story, part of the same family, part of the same idea, by having those be tighter, a little less space, that visually means that they're together. And people will pick up on that and then um, you know understand that better. So it'd be much like a heading and a subheading. You want them to be vastly far apart because they're to be read together. Same with an image and a caption and a lot of other ones. But as opposed to just talk about, let's get into some examples. So we have a example here. We've got an ice cream party on the way and there's a photo and some text. So at the moment it's okay, not the worst design, but we can definitely see some opportunity to improve things where the spacing on the photo, as you can see, is not the same all the way around. It's super close to the title here where you know this, these words can't breathe at all. And in addition, the subtitle and even the date are kind of far apart. So you know, what can we do to improve this? Let's uh, do this real time. So let's make sure uh, there's enough spacing around and even more. Let's make sure that it's the same amount of space around all sides. So to do that, uh, one of my favorite tricks, I'll talk about this in a different course specifically, because this is one of my favorite designer tricks, is to go over to your elements and bring in a square. So just search for a square and bring it in. All right, so we have our square. Take this square and measure. And keep it as a square, so let me uh, use the corners. I'll just make things a little bit easier. Because now this is our measured unit, you know, <laughs> unit of measure for the spacing. So to make sure the top is spaced the same as the side, and actually you can even copy and paste if you want to keep them to see. As you can see, the top is not the same as the side, because it's a square. So we can now actually bump this down. Uh, same thing, copy and paste, let's bring it down to the bottom. And make sure that that has enough space. And in between the photo and the wording, let's make sure there's enough space there. So I'm going to now here you have kind of two ways to go about it. You can have the whole text box or you can have it actually bump up against the letter, however you decide. So let's grab one more time, do the same thing over to the other edge. Let's have that Y just a little bit close. There we go. So that's spaced about the same. So that is the spacing. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these squares. I'll, tell you, I'll keep one just in case we bring it back. But immediately, we're not quite finished yet, but already, taking this type of chaos and just any amount of spacing, everything's kind of thrown around. We use one consistent space. We put it all around and the amount of order and comfort, how much this design breathes now, vastly improved. Now let's take some of those other ideas that we talked about where we want like information to be grouped, so have less spacing. So in this case, you're invited to an extra party, you know, title, subtitle. So let's bring that in nice and close because it's related information. And then here you can make a judgment call as far as, you know, do you want the information, the actual address and everything to be different than is it to you? Is it different information than the title and subtitle? Not really a right answer there. I'd say I would argue these two are. You really want to group those, but this debatable. Now as I look, I'm curious if there's enough space here. That looks a little bit crowded to me, so I'm glad I saved this square. Let's bring that back over and you know what? It is not. So we're going to adjust. We'll bring it over to the other side. I'm probably going to have to there we are. And then at this point you can make some decisions. Is that text large enough? We want to make it bigger. You know, entirely up to you. So as you can see, if we really want to, in this case, we like information together, then we use a lot of blank space to really call out the fact that this information is here. See how much it stands out as opposed to being kind of just middling in the corner, not really doing much. You could argue about it's the same information, so you want to have a tight, group, tight grouping. That looks interesting. All right, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and duplicate this. Let's see, let's see which one we like better. So we'll take these, we'll move it up, and because we want this to be kind of secondary information, it's different. So there's one design, and there's a different design. You know, I like this grouping. This, as you're designing it, that's up to your discretion. I'll go ahead and delete that. So we just made, we just took one square, we brought it up, we measured the amount of space on here, and then we made sure that all the elements had similar spacing. It's not a hard and fast rule. It has to be the same spacing. I would argue for um, a photo and the edges, you want to ensure that that's the case. Unless you want to, you know, do something interesting. For instance, you could, you know, have it bleed out into the corner and leave this down as a design element, something purposeful. But if it's just in there, you want to try to ensure it's the same spacing. And by doing that, we've greatly improved it. And not just the visuals. Like this looks a lot better from a design perspective, but it's a lot more legible. It, you really read this immediately. Big photo, ice cream, delicious. You're invited to an ice cream party. So we're helping it flow. We're helping them focus. Now let's, go, let's keep going with this. So spacing also relates to your text. So how much space? And here's the line. Now the two parts that it's going to relate to a text would be the line height, and that's how much space is between the individual sentences of these, uh, of this text, and how much space is in between your titles and your body. Now, you know, to make sure it's legible, you can always add just a bit more space so that the title is prominent, it's meaningful, it's interesting. For line height, as a general rule, if you can go 1.5 times, you'd be in good shape. So I mean by that, if you come up to spacing in Canva, and you'll see, so select the text, come up to spacing in the action bar, you'll see line height. Now it's currently 1.4, we'll bring it up to 1.5, and already you can see how kind of crowded this feels compared to that. Now per font, per program, everything else, you're gonna find a bit of variance, so here you're gonna want to play around with um, <clears throat> what's gonna look best. So starting at least at 1.5, I would recommend, and then you can go all the way up to hover even upwards of 1.8. But let's take these two and just move it up. So if we look here at the left side, how much space? And then trying to read these sentences, how condensed, how close everything feels, as opposed to adding a bit of space between the title. So it's a notable title, some space, we're leading them through. And then the text itself is a nice line height. So as I said, at least 1.5, going all the way up to 1.8, uh, even 2, depending on the font and the design. So spacing within text as well to make sure it's legible. Let's proceed here. So grouping. So what's nice about uh, these here is it's got the same spacing on the top and the bottom. So it uh, looks orderly, it looks nicely aligned. That's not too bad. But watch what happens. Um, this is to do with grouping and take groupings to give a sense of visual order. What if we were to reduce the space on either side? I'll go even further, just to kind of further prove the point. Actually, let's move it back up. Okay. So now look at the visual difference between these two sides. All we did was reduce some space. And of course you do so by making it wider as opposed to moving it, whatever the case may be. But on the left side here, this looks like six individual elements. One, two, three, four, five, six.
being a little too dramatic with my, <laughs> with my line here. You know, that's, this is a group and this is a group. Because they're closer together and then there's more space between them, we're just clearly identifying that these three go together. <clears throat> so what this might come handy for you is if you're presenting social uh, like things like a contact information. So you have email, phone number, website. That's like information. You want to keep those three together. Um, if you're doing you know social media icons at the bottom of your design, keeping those elements together because they're like information. Right? So these three are like pieces. So keeping as opposed to just having them kind of randomly around, if you bring them together, you associate them. And you're saying this these this is my social information to contact me on. So keeping like information together, having tight groupings, understanding that spacing can actually associate things to one another, bringing like pieces of data together. Let's continue on here. So this is a further one. Again, it's worth counterintuitive uh, at reducing the size, adding more negative or empty space actually results in more information being conveyed. So kind of a follow along to our previous example, uh, the big card describing an ice cream party. Let's go ahead and duplicate that and get some work. So I just press the duplicate button here in the top right and I got a second version of the card. What if we just shrunk it all down and played with the spacing? And again, with the spacing here, you'll see like it just feels like it's butting up against the photos, butting up against the side. It feels uncomfortable because of that. So let's bring that down. Let's group it in. Make sure it's a nice, it's a nice tight grouping together. Let's um, make that even smaller. It's good to have uh, when you have various pieces of text as much as possible. You can also have the text size difference be meaningful. You know, so this ice cream party that's how big the font is. This one bumps up. Nothing is a priority. There's no order. There's no you know number one, number two, number three. Everything's of equal visual weight, which we don't really want. We want to lead them through. So in the sense here too, we leave it that you reduce it down. And let's keep playing on sizes at least we want. Group it together so we know that it's like information, and then we have the same you know decision point we had before. We can have it extend out because it's a kind of secondary piece of information, or uh, have it up nice and close. Let's go the closest time. Now it feels like we have a bit of room to play with for this title here. You know, if you look at the empty space on the side, so we can increase that a little bit to make it dramatic, but not too much. And there we have to so compare where we work. So big, bolder text. Technically, you'd think that that would mean you actually read it better. But in fact, I'll reduce it. Now we add the proper amount of spacing. We group it nicely. How much more legible that this becomes. So one last example, just kind of um, bring it all home. Here is if it was an article or a card on your website, or um, you know, you're going to post this to social. Another example where just everything is matched together. The fonts here are good as far as there's enough difference between them to be meaningful. A nice photo. You know, a bright color on the action button. So all those pieces of the design are looking good, but still, it's kind of hard to read because it's so smashed together. Everything is so close. It's not really legible. Let's get to work. So we're going to give a bit of space to the first title. And just add some spacing between all of them. So I'm going to move this down. Now, if you are putting together a design like this and you start to run out of space, you'll have to make some desi design decisions. As much as I want as big a text as possible, as big a photo as possible, it's not always going to be possible if you don't have enough space because you'll get more content in, but that content will not be read as much because it's uncomfortable to read. So we need a little bit nicer spaced out. I don't have the title bigger than anything. And the last trick, I'm like the first one where we had a square. We made our square trick to make sure spacing is the same. So the same thing can benefit here. So if we're going to have the same spacing between everything, why not have that type of rule apply for all of the pieces of content too? We're trying to have roughly the same spacing between all these elements. So that spacing is repeated, it's expected, and it's going to help design feel much more balanced, much more laid out. So I think in this case, if we're looking for any way to save a bit of space, we could probably reduce this down, finding it's not different enough to really matter. So that feels better. Then let's put these two together. Let's give real prominence to that first title. Let's move this up so we're just you know, squeaking everything up to get everything really tight exactly where we want. And there we have it. Here are these squares to get a final look. Design and much more legible. So we started here where everything was just completely smashed together. It's really kind of hard to read these individual sentences, but now so clearly we invite this party. Here's the daily information, and then we're reading the able to read the various bits of text. Now, actually, to close out based on what we said, oops, wrong button. Uh, control Z is always your friend or Command Z if you uh, <laughs> click something by accident. The last thing to do is probably to, <laughs> second time, increase the line height. So, in fact, I selected both at the same time, thinking I could do it. It was not going to let me. So I'll do it one at a time. Spacing, you see it's down to 1.4. Let's put it up to 1.5. Just make that slightly more legible. There we go. And there we have it. So we started here. Everything together. Not much difference. Or not much spacing between anything. Everything is crammed together. Uh, we took the same amount of spacing. We applied it throughout to let everything breathe. We also increased the line height to have the actual text itself be more legible. So it's kind of counterintuitive in, in the sense that by reducing the size of the text and the content, by having negative space, literally empty space around, it can actually be really beneficial to get your message across. It's like less yelling and more talking. You lead them through, you make the design comfortable, you make it orderly, and you're gonna make it look so much better. If you take designs from this, applying some subtle nuance, and having things that are much better laid out. So always consider spacing when you're working with Canva and creating your great looking designs. See you in the next course.